Let's get to the fifth and final one. All right, <laughs> I might be in trouble. They all smell very similar. Other than the first one, and maybe it was just because the first nose, they all pretty much have that same sweet and spice note. They're all classic bourbon. The vanilla, the brown sugar, the caramel, the toffee. Welcome to Whiskey's The Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. Today, this is my second installment in my top five bottle blind flights of a specific whiskey. Today, we're doing 10-year-old bourbons, and this is how it works. I have selected five 10-year-old bourbons from my collection. I'm gonna show you what I'm going to be tasting. I'm gonna mix the glasses up, and then at the end of the nosing and tasting, I'm gonna select my favorite 10-year-old bourbon, and it's gonna win this round. And I'm gonna put it up against the other five bottle blind flights that I'm going to be doing. My first bottle flight, I'm gonna leave a card at the end of the video if you wanna take a look at that. I did my top five blended malts. So the winner of that one is gonna go up against the winner of one of these and the other five blind flights that I'm gonna be doing as well. I think I'm gonna do about five of them and then put the five winners together and then go on to the next five and see how, see how that goes. It's a series in progress. So let's go ahead and get to bottle number one. And these are in no particular order. I'm just gonna pick them up and let you know what they are. So my first bottle is going to be Eagle Rare 10. I paid uh, $35.99 for this, and it's coming in at 45% ABV. This is going to be in glass number one. And I do have these labeled on the bottom so I can keep track. And then as I'm tasting them, I'm gonna put them all in the bottom right here so you know what I'm tasting as they get mixed up. Bottle number two. This is a Russell's Tenure coming in at 45% ABV. $30.99. This is going to be in glass number two. And if I haven't said this already, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Prices are going to be varied uh, from state to state, but that's what I paid. Glass number two, lay it on the bottom. Bottle number three. We have a bottled and bond Henry McKenna, 10 years. And to be specific, this is barrel number 11906. And this was barreled on 11 2 11. We've got 100 proof, and that is going to be in glass number three. Bottle number four, Calumet 10 year. This is 100 proof, and this is batch number CA10L02. This is the Bull Lee version 10 year, and that's going to be in glass number four. And then the fifth and final bottle before I start mixing these up is going to be a little bit of a, I wouldn't say a unicorn, but it's definitely something that is not seen in stores any longer. I think I found the last bottle of this maybe two months ago at a Total Wine and More. Your area, you might be able to find these, but it's a barrel product. Barrel Bourbon batch number 28, and this is aged 10 years. And we're looking at 108.86 proof. So 54.43% ABV. And that is going to be in glass number five. So let me go ahead and mix these things around. I'll nose them, taste them, put them in the order in which I like the most. And then we'll get that one moved on to the next round. Oop. This is why I don't put them in Lazy Susans because <laughs> I think I would absolutely destroy these. They would fall down they'd break and then I'd be out of luck. So I think that is sufficient. Let me get these things on here, get the lids off. And I am already sweating like crazy. I got my air conditioner off and I'm sweating. It's still pretty hot in Phoenix, Arizona. Sweet spice right off the bats of these 10 years. And glass number one, Fruity sweet, touch of spice, smells pretty good. Glass number two, not uh, as potent on the nose as that one, but still fruity sweet with a little bit of spice. If I had to guess immediately, this is probably lower proof than that. This might be 100 proof. Hmm, that one's got some oak, a little bit more uh, spice and sweetness, maybe a little bit higher in the ABV. I think so far I like the nose on this one, this one, then that one. Next glass. All right, that's interesting. Almost nothing out of that. Coating the glass and swirling the glass, 
I guess gets those ethanol vapors. This one seems pretty dead to the nose. Maybe a little brown sugar. Yeah, not much. They That one's very reminiscent of this one. They smell pretty much the same. Let's get to the fifth and final one. All right, <laughs> I might be in trouble. They all smell very similar. Other than the first one, and maybe it was just because the first nose, they all pretty much have that same sweet and spice note. They're all classic bourbon, the vanilla, the brown sugar, the caramel, the toffee, but nothing really stands out. Nothing is jumping out of the glass. All right, let me go back to glass number one, give it a taste. So far, I, I don't know, they all, they all kind of smell the same. Glass number one on the palate. All right, good amount of oak, good amount of spice. The brown sugar, the vanilla is there. I think being my first sip, I think this is a little bit higher in ABV. I think the nose matches the palate on this. Let's go on to glass number two. I like that one so far. Hmm. All right, I get a little bit of a cherry note on that one, followed by spice. Again, classic notes. If I had to guess as I'm going, I think this one is going to be my preference so far over this. I don't think I'm much of a high rye spice person. I think I like a little bit more of a darker, fruitier note. I think that is where my palate tends to be. And I think this seems to be a little bit more spicy. It's st still good, but let me go ahead and move on to number three and see what this one's like. This one immediately off the bat, I get Calumet vibes. I could be completely wrong, but that reminds me of Cal the Calumet profile. Um, get some uh, good amount of cherry, little amount of spice. This is sweeter than that and comparable to this. So these would be my one and two, this would be three. As far as notes go, they're all pretty much very, very close. They all have those traditional bourbon flavors. Move on to glass number four. All right, that one even has more oak and more spice. Pretty good on the ABV, barrel tannin, barrel bitterness. There's a lot more flavor in this one, but the flavors that I'm getting are not my preferred flavor. The ABV elevates the spice and then I think there's also spice in there that is also elevated because of the ABV. Good amount of oak, not a lot of sweetness, bringing up the rear so far. So glass number five down. Cinnamon, classic bourbon note, good amount of spice. Hmm. These all taste very, very similar. This is gonna be extremely difficult. A Little bit of rinse of water there before I actually took that sip. I guess a good amount of oak in this one as well. These two are very comparable with the amount of wood notes and tannin and bitterness. I still think I'm preferring this one out of all of them, followed by this. So I, my initial reaction, I like these two the most, and these three seem to have some spice and wood that would put them behind these two. I'm gonna work my way back this direction and see if anything changes. But right now, I would lock this in as first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. But that's subject to change. Let me go ahead and go back through the other direction, see if anything changes. See, now that one has a little bit more of a candied sweetness to it. I think I like this one the most. On the nose and on the palate, I think this is the clear winner for me. The second time through, this has a good amount of oak, and I like the candy sweetness in here rather than the spice from the others that I'm getting. So let me go ahead and put my final bottle guesses down and give you my order. In last place, I would put this. In fourth place, this. Third place, this. Second place would be this. And then first place, here. Now my guesses. Eagle Rare Barrel Batch 28. I think that's the barrel batch number. Barrel batch number 28. Henry McKenna. Russell's Reserve 10. And then the last bottle would have to be the Calumet. Even though I think this one originally gave me the Calumet vibes, I think this with the candied sweetness might be the Calumet. So let's see what my first place was. And I've got to put my glasses on because I can't see anything. 
my first place glass and moving on to round two is going to be the Eagle Rare 10. So Eagle Rare is taking my first place. Glass number two, I have Calumet 10. Glass three, I have Russell's Reserve 10. And I think this one gave me the Calumet vibes. And then Barrel Bourbon and the Henry McKenna 10. So no bueno on the bottle guesses. It doesn't make a difference whether the bottle guesses were correct or not. It just narrows it down to Eagle Rare 10 moving on to the next round. I'm gonna blend these a little bit. I'm gonna grab another Glen Karen and see what the blend is like. A little bit of that, a little bit of this. And one of my viewers wanted to know if I mess with the blends off camera, and I really don't. Um, maybe it's something that I could do in the future, but let's see how this blend does with all of the 10 years. A lot of oak, a lot of spice. It's lost the sweetness. All right, I got a little bit of citrus, maybe a little bit of orange peel. Right, let's get it on the palate. Nope, absolutely killed everything. There is, this, this is flat lined. Um, not a good blend at all. So that's where I'm gonna leave it before I die of a heat stroke. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite 10 year bourbon would be. If you've had any of these, let me know what you think of them in the comments down below. And that's all I've got. Like, subscribe, share, turn on that bell notification. I publish videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And until the next time, I hope you're enjoying your journey and we'll talk to you later. Bye.